uh, end of last month was International Day of Bilingualism, and it uh, is one of those things which I'm a, a great supporter of that uh, uh, young people and uh, try to learn a second language wherever possible because languages um, open the doors to understanding other cultures and uh, not only can be used for in terms of understanding but also can benefit in e economic sense. So, what, But closer to home, one of the uh, languages which was once taught in the region, uh, particularly in the uh, Schubert, uh, sub, uh, the Schubert uh, electorate, was, was German. And, and sadly, it, does, it sadly has a, a, a sore history, and I'll explain why. Mr Speaker, I've been working alongside the Brussels German Language Association uh, for some time now, and at, um, I know they're very keen to establish, re-establish a bilingual German program either as a subject or subjects to be taught uh, in German or as a bilingual program in, throughout the Brossa. I, th I believe that with, with appropriate government support, a pilot program to, could be initiated and to see wha what sort of the uptake would be. The Brossa German Language Association aim aims to value, renew and expand the use of German in the region and hosts regular events spoken in German, such, to, uh, such, to, such as the monthly uh, coffee and cooking, I think that's pronounced correctly, uh, event, uh, basic coffee and cake. Some of the key individuals involved in the association are as follows. There's Dr Peter Micken from the University of Adelaide, University of Adelaide who has been a key driver of this initiative as a project leader of a Brossa German language revival and renewal project which led to the establishment of the, B, of the Brossa German Language Association in 2015. Uh, there's Steffi Traeger, the current president of the Brossa uh, the, the association, local historians Everard Lesky and Don Ross. Don is also the manager of the Brossa Museum and they regularly attend events. And also uh, Reto uh, Gasser. Um, Reto is um, uh, a former teacher at Xavier College uh, and when it was in my electorate and provides catering for the events. He was actually a catering and hospitality uh, teacher and, and lives in my electorate. And G German, very important, German is a heritage language in the Brossa. There is an emerging younger generation of local families and migrants who want their children to learn and retain bilingualism with effective German programs. A bilingual program would re-establish bilingualism for the community and members who have missed out on the opportunity to be competent in the use of German. Hope that a motion in this parliament will contribute uh, at some point will contribute to the rehabilitation of the status of German as significant in the lives of people and in the history of the Brossa Valley. Uh, German is a significant social and uh, has a significant and social and cultural value. I understand, Mr. Speaker, that uh, before 1914 and the First World War, there were 29 bilingual German English schools in the Brossa Valley. The schools were closed down to the anti-German sentiment in 1917. This has, has had, this has had a big impact on the practice of German, uh, spoken German in the valley. Uh, the Brussels was settled by German speakers in the mid-19th century, with spoken and written German maintained by a few descendants into the 21st century. The history of, sp of spoken German in the Brussels is a combination of the resilience of a language transmission across generations and the fragility of language in the face of ethnic hostility exacerbated by global conflicts. In the Brussels community, German, uh, in the Brussels community, German was spoken normally until the second half of the 20th century. People spoke German with families and neighbours and in, in, the, and in their day-to-day -day business. They attended local Lutheran churches with services held in German. Uh, when children went to school, they were required to learn English as an additional language. Celebrations and social events were in German. German was the first language at home, in church, in schools and for business. It was actually for quite a while the community language in the Barossa. Sunday school, confirmation classes, weddings, youth activities and funerals were also in, uh, spoken in German. Church services were based on the German liturgy, with hymns sung in German and preaching in German. Pastors and teachers were educated in German. Education was valued in Lutheran communities. Between 1839 and, and, 19, and 1914, some 115 Lutheran congregational schools were opened in South Australia. In the Brossa Valley from 1842 to 1862, 23 community bilingual German bilingual German English uh, schools were established. The curriculum was organised with subjects taught in German in the morning and English in the afternoon. But sadly, by the 
By the middle of the 20th century, German was no longer a community language. In a few families, German was spoken in private at home to talk with grandparents, but the maintenance of German through use in the family has practically ceased. In the years from 1914 to 1946, anti-German attitudes, actions and legislation had enormous impact on German language use in the community. With the declaration of war in August 1914, the descendants of German-speaking immigrants who had been welcomed into the English colony in the 19th century and contributed significantly to the economy of the new colony experienced ethnic discrimination and internment, including pastors, community leaders and business people. To cope, some families actually anglicised their names. In 1914, inscriptions of gravestones in German were discontinued. The Nomenclature Act of 1917 changed 69 German place names in South Australia to English. Uh, one of them obviously was places like Bethany uh, in the Bross Valley uh, and uh, others like uh, Petersburg be became Peterborough, Handorf became Ambleside, Lobelthor became Tweedvale, uh, Clemsit became Gaza and Blumberg became Norwood amongst some others. A few of, the, few of the names were restored in 1935 and between, between 1935 and 1986, but others, others remain unchanged. In 1917, the South Australian government passed legislation to close all bilingual schools. The legislation halted local bilingual education and disenfranchised teachers who could not switch to teaching English. After the Second World War, when for, former bilingual schools were reopened, the curriculum was only in English without reference to the German history and culture of the school. By the end of the Second World War, public and private use of German was discouraged and German was taught in schools, not as a community language, but as a foreign language. Today, German has vir virtually disappeared from public use outside some of the uh, Barossa German Language Association events. The promotion of, of Kaffee and Kuchen events has attracted recent immigrants to join with heritage speakers. The current focus of the Barossa German Language Association is education. It has established programs for preschoolers to adults. There's a play group, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get this pronunciation incorrect, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I think it's called Spiegel Gruppe for preschoolers and children's club, kinder club, for school aged children and German classes for adults. The Brossa, Lang the Brossa German Language Association is now planning the introduction of bilingual teaching in local schools. The reestablishment of bilingual classes is a social justice responsibility of cultural restoration with recognition of the value of bilingual education. And Mr Speaker, uh, just to reinforce the importance of language, uh, and it's interesting that I've, when I've been speaking to people who have a, who have a great understanding of the Brossa Valley and the German migration uh, to, to the Brossa, uh, it's interesting that um, they, the German people were a highly educated population. They put a huge value in education. And, and I was wondering why would German people actually be different to other groups of migrants other parts of the world? Uh, and it is actually, I am, I'm told, it's because they're Lutherans. And Lutheran people actually have a, have a, a strong emphasis between the relationship between the individual and God. And so to understand that relationship, they had to be able to read the Bible. And to be able to read, they were educated. So there was a strong emphasis uh, in... Uh, uh, Lutheran families to make sure that um, uh, their family members are well educated so they can have that relationship with God and as a result German was a really strong language and as a community they were quite literate and well educated. It would be sad to a language which has had such a strong history in this, in this state would all disappear and I think now is the time to come to actually consider some bilingual schools acknowledging the importance of, of English but also accessing the culture of the Brasser through an understanding of the German language.